All right, we're here for our second match of the day. We have Kevin versus Patrick. I'm Mark Caterberg. I am Peter Kritzberger of MTG Cabalcast. And we are here to uh, to commentate this match. So Kevin is on his mono-red deck that we saw in match one. Uh, Patrick is on a very different deck. So let's jump over and take a look at Patrick's list, if I can figure out how to do that yep. in this world. Uh... So I've got Patrick's list up, and it reads like he explained it in his interview okay. that we did at the end. Yep. Where Patrick is basically looking to play this tokens-style game with Third Path Iconoclast and Mentor. And is it Spell Spear? No, that just gives... The backside just gives your stuff other prowess. But like basically looking to make tokens, create a board presence. Not go, like, wide, like you think of when you think of tokens, but just wide enough. Okay. And then, basically, some Xerox spells. Um, I sent his list to your text message. I couldn't get it added to the sheet. It wasn't editing. Okay. So. Uh, he sent me the, the list via text message, so I need to forward that to myself on Discord, and then we can, should be able to see it. So give me a second. Uh, why don't you talk... Oh, there's a Merktide region in hand. Okay, so uh, he mulled down to six, it looks like. Yep, this is a keepable six. There are enough sorceries and instants like Kevin predicted, to kind of cut through the deck pretty quickly and not just find the mono sources that he needs for his list to function, but also to basically feed the Murktide. Okay. So my expectation is that even if we don't hit a quick Murktide, we should hit a, a quick token generator and go from there, but we might just be stuck on double blue. That makes sense. Yeah, we started off with an opt, which is good. Yeah. Although, what is that's a that that is a scalding worm or whatever it's called. It's the uh, the other eidolon. Scalding viper. Got scalding it. Scalding okay. viper. There we go. Okay, so we just rolled. We just ran out the viper. Right. We just yeah there's ambush viper. viper effectively. Yeah, I, I, Kevin doesn't actually have a way of playing uh, the store steam clean, so it is purely just a the one half of the card, the creature half. Uh, True name, though, is a pretty good way to guarantee you can get damage in against Kevin. Yeah, this is going to do a lot of heavy lifting in this matchup, or just hang out and block. It should threaten uh, a lot. They like, kind of stuff Kevin's attempts into combat. Yep. Because I don't think Kevin can really... Well, he can make a board presence for sure. Yeah, we, we saw with the moat game last time that uh, he definitely can win through without attacking, but he, the deck is a lot of creatures. Yep. All right, so Bowmasters goes upstairs because you can't target the Nemesis. Yep. Patrick does also have a lot of draw spells in his deck. Yep, and we light up the stage with Spectacle because we dealt one damage with the Bowmasters. So even with a creature on board, chances are we were going to go... Sorry, a targetable creature on board. Chances are we're going to go upstairs anyway to cast Light. That makes complete sense. I really like the light up the stage in this list. Yeah, a lot of the... Um, it's a card I forgot about when we were discussing... Uh, ways to get velocity off the top of your library. Um, I was looking more at, like I mentioned, we when we lost Chandra Torch of Defiance or something like uh, Outpost Siege. That's a okay. way to do this. Yeah, that's a lot slower, but this is... Yep. Yeah. Outpost yep, Siege is it, better inevitability for sure, though. Yes. All right. Four blue is not where we want to be if we are Patrick right now. Yeah, this model blue list does not seem to be performing very well. No, it's difficult to cast your white and red spells out of your mono blue list. Correct. Although that helps a lot. Oh, man. Yep. Bonk for one. Got to remember your triggers. And then... Here's a fun thing. You you can use the true name to crew the uh, the copter in order to be able to draw and discard. But if you yes. do, you trigger the Orcish Bowmasters. Yes. So you it is... don't want to do that. No, but it does put Kevin in an interesting spot where all of your creatures die on the block, but you could punch through uh, a damage and pump your army. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, uh, I don't so, know. I mean, pumping your army, though, is can't be worth just, like, giving them a bigger creature and taking damage. I wouldn't expect that to be the, the case unless our hand is just rancid. Sure. If we're Kevin. So there's definitely some... There's opportunity here if things are just not going your way yeah that's fair all right bolt upstairs easy enough and i can't make out the other exile card but it's got a lot of text so it's not a land 
Yes, I agree. It, it's I think this is one of those two drops that like has an attack trigger and other weird things. Uh, oh, okay. Okay, Rebel Master. Rebel. All right. Mostly correct. It's a three drop instead, though. Yeah. I feel like that's a fine card to lose. We have no other goblins, so we yeah. can't bump up Rabble Master enough to make it a threatening block. And Correct. then punch through a lot of damage alongside Rabble Master. Stomp you. Okay. Has another 10 now, is that right? Or no, 12. It has another 12. 12, I think, yeah. Yeah, this this true name is doing work. You're just hanging back on D. Yeah. So Patrick did just draw and pass back, which is... It's a big scene. We have six islands in the list, and we have drawn four, drawn played four. Yeah, I mean this is this is the shame of not getting. I mean his mana base is actually pretty good too. He has Scare, Sacred Foundry, a Triome, uh, and two other Ooh. duels. We are we're about to discover for the first time, and what okay. do we discover? We discover a uh, a curse. That's not maddening hex. What that is it? Is maddening hex? Oh, it is. I missed yeah. that in the draft. All right. Maddening Hex is a fun card. It's a real dumb card if you like to play that X I like to play. Mm-hmm. Whenever Enchanted Player casts a non-creature spell, roll a d6. Maddening Hex deals damage to that player equal to the result. Then attach Maddening Hex to another one of your opponents chosen at random. All right, so, Patrick did it the slow way, but he found found another source. So he's going to be searching up his trial almost assuredly off of that Lorien Revealed. No, what? Mystic Sanctuary is going to put Opt on top? Does he not know that you can find duels? Oh, he does. He's very much aware of that. What is happening then? I. Wait, what did he roll for? He didn't cast Maddening. He didn't cast Lorien Revealed. Maybe he's saying he cast it in his upkeep. I bet that's it. He wanted to scry before he drew. Oh, okay. Which doesn't make sense now that I say it out loud, but I don't know. It would make sense that Patrick was done with that game. <laughs> I could totally see that. Yeah, yeah. You're so low that the I think creatures on board, once you have the giant there, it's still going to kill you. Wow, he is pulling a lot of cards out. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't know what these two piles are, because there's cards that I expect to see out in one of them, and cards I would expect to see out in the other as well. All right, let's, let's jump over to uh, to see their Moxfield lists. Okay. So. So this is Kevin's. Yes, here's Kevin's list, wherever that window is. Yep, right here. Uh, so seeing cards that come out of it. Uh, you're not Steven. What does this mean? Uh, yeah, but what do you see here that really is, is jumping out at you as a must-take-out? Oh, what we are going to take out, let's see. We know what Patrick is on. I think I would take out a... Man, Delayed Blast Fireball is going to be real good when you get there. I think Spike Field Hazard is an easy cut. Yeah. I think that's just a swap for Fry. That makes sense. Unless you want to go Goblin Chain Roller in a spot. I think those are t I think those are an easy swap. Um, impact tremors might be a little slow. And if you're going to do that, then do you take out Azure as well? I think my question is more what I'm going to bring in, and I think I would bring in Rampaging, Ferocidon, Fry, and Goblin Chain Warler. Okay, not Skullcrack. That's my next question. Well, uh, you, you, wait, you, you need the Rebs, right? You need Pyroblast against this deck, I would think. Are, were these in here? Pyroblast? Do we have Reb? Yeah, so I would bring in Fry, Pyroblast, Reb, Rampaging, Ferocidons. Yep. And I th think that would be it, so those four cards. Oh, dang, they're already ready. They are back. Yep. I think those are just the easy, the easy pickings, and then after that I would take out cards that are going over the top and are slower. That makes sense. You're the combo deck, effectively, in this matchup. You want to get them dead ASAP. Mm -hmm. And the cards that you're bringing in either control the board and further your plan or just clean the board up. That makes sense. We have Kevin Mulliganing. Uh, Patrick seems happy with his hand. He has a time twister in it. Yeah, I saw that. That might, that might prove pretty interesting and pretty good. Looking at Patrick's list, though, I'm not sure what I'm really going to do with this. I think... Dress down 
is a card I would definitely consider bringing in. I saw him pull that one out. Exile. He also pulled out Dovin's Veto. Okay. Veto, uh, Dress Down, Path, Fire, Thalia. Ice. Yep, Thalia. Um, I could see Skyclave. There's a lot of creatures on the other side of the board. I was thinking about Skyclave as well. I'm just afraid that we might hit a critical mass of spells of cre of spells to bring in that yeah. aren't actually spells. They're creatures, so they don't further our prowess plan. Oh, sure. So we need to be cognizant of that. But Dovin's Veto, Dress Down, Fire, Ice, Path for, for spells, right? Then Thalia and Skyclave are two creatures, so we got to figure out how to optimally retain the ability to trigger prowess while furthering our plan. That makes sense. Uh, last question, just as uh, Patrick has played his Triome. Do you bring in the One Ring as a four mana, give you protection of everything for one turn? That could... That, man, I like that. I might actually just hard swap that with Virtue of Loyalty. Okay. Virtue of it, like, it's nice. It's, it's a cool little tutu. Yeah. Um, but it, it's its job is to effectively fog. Yeah. So why not just wait a smidge? Oh, wow. Well, we are aggressive about this one. He's pitching the Skyclave, too. That is really aggressive. Yep. That's a call you made on the Skyclave. I I don't know about that play. I think that, to me, that kind of smacks of the fact that oh, we're yeah. going to be playing a longer game. So, oh, okay. No, no. There we go. That's exactly why. This makes complete sense now. Given that you know that you're going to be pitching your both your hands, just like clear yep. out two cards in your hand and then reshuffle your Re deck. So off camera, we had a ridiculous oh. turn two balance play, right? Oh. Followed by the two hands going down, going down to two hands, and uh, he has three artifacts out. They're going down each to two hands and uh, cards in hand. But the uh, Dan kept ancestral and uh, dig through time as his two cards. So he immediately ancestrals afterward, goes back to the four, drawing nothing but lands, and he has like five cards in his graveyard for the dig. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this format's yeah. great. I love. Yeah. I love when balance. <laughs> like, this should on camera. I'm like, together. there's always amazing plays that are on camera. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, I think we resolved Twister incorrectly. Uh, what happened? Oh, Twister got I shuffled in. Yeah, sh Twister no. should be in the yard. I'll take care of that. Yeah, and Patrick, I think, kept his hand, which oh, is Patrick not the case. Oh, Patrick shouldn't keep his hand either. Okay, I think they're fixing it right now. Okay, I didn't want to say anything as we were resolving because I wasn't exactly sure what the context was. Of it. I thought the face down card might have been Twister, but okay. Yeah, I mean it's also possible that he shuffled his hand in and just drew some of the same cards. No, no he left the card face down on the table, basically underneath the, oh, the pearl towards the edge. Got it. Okay. So, and then Kevin just shuffled and drew seven, or was completely out of cards. One of the others, so he just drew a fresh grip. Yeah, no, he, he definitely had cards left. He only he only played three. Yeah, I I think we're moder we feel moderately okay if we're Patrick now. We're passing back. Our life isn't under duress. We've given our opponent one whole life back from the shock. I don't know. I I, I feel fine. Like it's okay. You're up. You're That's up on But it's I don't feel good. You're you're playing against them on a red. And they have a full grip. But. You stopped the primary damage source. Yeah. So now I think... It was a good exchange. Don't get me wrong. I just don't, yeah. I don't think you're out of the woods. No, not at all. This is still your game to lose. Yep. And there's the Rabble Master, which helps a whole lot with that. Yep. That's a card that will do that. I think we're just left with Path to Exile, Council's Judgment, and Winds of Abandon. There's ways to get rid of this card. Uh, Let's see. Because... Oh, uh, Fire Ice, because Skyclave was already exiled. Yeah. I mean, you can also just create a thing to block it. I don't know. Like, Monastery have... Mentor is pretty good at blocking it. So is True yep. Name. So is, like, Third Pass Iconoclast. Like, none of these things have Trample. Okay, hear me out. I don't think this is going to happen. This is Magical Christmas Land. I hope this is where we see Tishana's Tidebinder, Tidebinder come in. <laughs> That'd be great. We stifle the trigger and then just blank rabble master for the rest of this match honestly i mean that'd be great also like i could see bringing that card in given that all of kevin's cards are just like walls of text it makes sense yeah even dress down I mean, dress down's not as good obviously but like it's, it's acceleration yeah i thought we would we would be bringing dress down in because exactly like you said kevin's creatures can do so much especially rampaging ferocidons which is a card i would expect to come in yes like the majority of the cards i'm citing in if i'm kevin are meant to deal with rampaging ferocidon that makes sense. Like, Impact Tremors is Impact Tremors. I've got nothing for that. Ooh, what is this? 
I don't know this uh, art. I don't know that art either. Wait, uh, we saw that card before. I think this is... Oh, man. I know I've seen Sorry. this card. It's not the royal one, though. Let me pull up his list and see. Do, 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 do. So we have Maddening Hex again. Oh, is it Harsh Mentor? Yeah, I think it's Harsh Mentor. Okay, that makes sense. So basically every time Patrick taps his mox, now he's going to take two. Oh, no, sorry. He won't. It's a mana ability, right, Moxon? Uh, in mana ability. Yeah, mox, mox in our own mana abilities. Mana, okay, never mind. We're still good. That, wait, did we not crack our fetch land? Oh, that's, that's going to hurt. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to hurt a lot. Unless we're doing this all in response. Or maybe Kevin forgets his trigger. Yeah. No, I think we might have done it all in response. Okay. We're at 16. We have fetched and we took uh, three damage from goblin tokens. Yep. You know, there's there's a world where he could have uh, used... What is that card called? Uh, used defabricate to counter the triggered oh. ability of rabble baster at some point oh this is cool yeah we're taking a lot of damage for this one how sure are you that that card is not maddening hex i'm very sure actually not looking at it yeah that is 100 percent maddening hex yeah yeah you're right I don't think that card's Harsh Mentor. It is the other art. Okay. Um, the Moxfield list has the correct art. It is from LTC, which I think is... Uh, it's not Lost Caverns Commander, but something else. Yeah, it's difficult because we have multiple arts running along, but it is that is the closest look I have for I the mono. Let me, let me pull it up in Scryfall and see if I'm right. Okay. Nope, you're right. I counter one on it. It is Inti. Okay, got it. Yeah, uh, let me pull that up here if I can figure out how to manipulate this. Oh, thing. I think we just took five to make a 2-2 two -two to block. Ouch. Pretty brutal. But yeah, here's Inti. Yeah, yeah that Maddening that Hex has been the all-star of both of these matchups, I think. It was, it's good enough for Legacy, so yeah. it should be good enough here. I think it might, be better, constant... than, it might be better here than in Legacy, because in Legacy, at least people have Force of Wills to protect themselves from it. Here, there's just like no way to stop it. No, the majority of your opponents are just not going to be able to engage. Yeah. The rules of engagement are entirely different. This is one of those things where, like, the fact that even in singleton formats, Oop. you aren't fighting with people for your cards. So, yeah, you know, it's just wild to see. Uh, yeah. But it's it's fun it's fun to see kind of these cards that often get just, like, shut down. And kind of, like, are fine or role players. Uh, but they're kind of role players out of bad decks. How they can really shine in this format where you wouldn't otherwise see them. Yeah, it's just another fashion or another form of constant pressure. Yes. From the red deck. But it's... it's only contingent on your opponent casting non-creature spells, which the majority of players in this format are going to be doing. Yep. And then what would be the average of 6B for this? Is it really... Three and a half. Like three and a half? Yeah. Yeah. Alex so, is going to Kevin C. Matt is going... Hmm? Alex is going to Kevin C. Okay. Matt is going to the other seat. Nice. Jump in. All right. Uh, so, it's, yeah, it's going to be uh, Steven and... I guess, yeah, we're going to stop this recording and start the next one. We're recording.